Let's talk about remote viewing. That's the exciting part. The first time I ever heard about remote viewing, I said, wow, that is just so fantastic, so out of the ordinary. How can those people do that? Well, in a short time, you'll be able to do it. Remember, they're not wired up any differently than you are. They're just using what you use every day in a very special way. Jose says that the difference between genius mentality and ordinary lay mentality is that geniuses use more of their mind and use it in a very special way. So that's what you're learning to do is become a genius. Simply by breathing, closing your eyes, visualizing certain things, and opening your eyes, it's that easy. Not too long ago on the Internet, I tuned into a site and it said, how'd you like to see what's going on in Waikiki Beach right now? It was so cold and rainy where I was. And I thought, wow, that'd be great. So I tuned into the site and clicked on the little icon for the camera and like magic. There it was, a video camera set up out on the beach. It was panning back and forth. There were people sunbathing. There were people swimming in the water, building sandcastles, having a great time walking up and down the beach holding hands. And I thought, wow, what a miracle. And let's go back again to that native Aboriginal tribesman in Australia. And if we ask him, you know, which one of these is a miracle? That you sit down and close your eyes and you can see what's going on over in the next hill? Or I have this little box and we don't have to close our eyes. We just click on this little thing and everyone here in the tribe could see a picture from a beach 5,000 miles away. Of course he'd say, well, the box, that's the miracle. So he's learned to do in his everyday way of being in the world what we're learning here. And the more I remote view, the more I realize, yeah, the box is a miracle. Because it is a miracle to be able to take objects, things from the material world, and put them together in such a way that they replicate, that they impersonate our own innate abilities. That's the miracle for me. So let's talk about you using your own innate, hardwired abilities. When you're going to remote view, you just imagine, just create a place. If you were looking at Bob's house, well, you know about what a house looks like. You make the outline, and then you let your intuition fill in the details. You see, that kind of sensing is not limited by time and space. You remember Jose talked about the two kinds of senses. Our original senses, which are our intuitive senses, our mental and spiritual senses, and this other set of senses that are physical senses. Now, those are the ones that are limited. Those are the ones that are limited to physics or physical input. They're limited to what light hits the eye? What molecules go up the nose? What temperature or texture touches the end of our fingers? And so those senses are limited to how far a vibration can travel in the air and then impress itself on our eardrum. Let's talk about a set of senses that is not limited that is not limited by even space and time. Let's talk about a set of senses that can see way beyond today and way beyond yesterday. Time belongs to the outer consciousness level. It belongs to the left hemisphere. Out here we have a linear sense of time. One hour can only happen in one hour. And when that hand goes all the way around, one hour will have passed. And that's it. Well, that's true out here. You are learning your way around in a dimension, in a state of mind or way of being in which those things aren't so concrete, where time is malleable, 
You can go back and look at what happened yesterday. Suppose you're trying to help a child who's very upset. You can go back and look at them going back a week at a time until that upset stops. And then you can concentrate in that area and see what happened. Then you can help that child. It's so simple. It's like walking into a store and wanting to see what happened at the counter. Well, what do you do? You just hit the rewind button on their video cameras and you can see what happened. Again, that's the miracle, just taking things and objects and impersonating what you can do naturally. That seems like the hard way. So as you use these techniques and learn to do more and more remote viewing, make it a game. Use your workbook. There'll be a section in there for successes. And under remote viewing, make it a game. If you're going to go to some place tomorrow, then go into this alpha level, do your relaxation, and picture what is that place going to look like? What colors will be on the walls? And then when you get there the next day, remember what it looks like and come home and compare your notes because that's how you make corrections. You say, oh, I got the color right. Or the next time, oh, I got the shape of the room right. Oh, well, the desk was over there. So I saw the desk over here. Okay, so next time I'll be a little more careful and look at it a little more closely. And that way you can get feedback about where your successes are. And you can enhance your abilities. One of the ways I use remote viewing is in a very nice hobby that I have, goal prospecting. Being a Silva grad, it occurred to me that I needed to get some points of reference for gold. So I ordered some little pieces of gold through the mail and I taped them to a little white card and went outside and spread out a big tarp, 10 feet by 15 feet. And my helper there was instructed to wait until I walked around the corner of the building and then put the pieces of gold at various points underneath the tarp and then cover the tarp back up and then tell me to come on over now, they were ready. So when I would walk around the corner, I would close my eyes and remote view that tarp and where the pieces of gold were, tuning into it, and would come out there and I had four rocks, and I would put a rock on top of the tarp where I had viewed where the gold was. Well, at first I got two. Then I consistently could get three, and then I could consistently get four, and the rock would be within six or eight inches of where that piece of gold was. So now I'm out in the gold fields, and there's an old prospector there who sort of like me and was showing me how to prospect, and he says, now in this stream, we want to go on this inside edge. And I said, you know, I think the gold is over there. And he said, no, that, no, no, that's all wrong. It, it goes on the inside edge. If you want me to teach you, then follow what I say. So we dug up this area, ran it through the machine, then panned it. It wasn't very much gold there at all. And he says, you want to try your little hot spot over there? And I went over there and out of a five gallon bucket in this one little spot, we got more gold than we'd got out of two pickup loads of dirt that we had processed during the day. So you can remote view by learning and getting the frequency of what you're looking for. So often I walk into a store and I remote view the store on the way in and say, where is what I need? Because, you know, in these grocery stores, they like changing the things around. So you walk every aisle and I go right to it. When I lose a tool, when I'm working out on the ranch, I say, where's the tool? And I'll raise up and my attention will be drawn to a certain place. And I'll go over there and there's their tool. So this remote viewing is like a whole other set of senses. Use it like it was a set of senses. Use it in a nonchalant way because they're your senses. Now, it's very important 
and very helpful to do the theta section of this recording three times a week. Even after you finish the course, even after you're successful. I've been doing this since 1971, and I listen to theta three times a week. Now, why would I do that? Well, Jose taught us that our brain waves normally in a waking state operate between 14 and 21. By lowering our brain waves, usually people who are wired the same as you and haven't had this training go to sleep at around 12. And they dream at 10. And they're asleep. A silver grad, after a little practice from this program that you're listening to, will be able to do math, solve problems, very intricate thinking and planning, where most people are simply unconscious and asleep. So by using theta, that means that will become your new point of lowering your brain waves, where beyond that you would go to sleep. And by functioning three times a week with consciousness, now that's not going to sleep, that's sitting in a chair, at theta, and listening to that part of the recording three times a week, that becomes your new baseline. That means you're conscious way, way down there in theta. And that means during the day, your brain waves that function in a seven-cycle kingdom will be going between six, down there where theta is, all the way up to 13. And again, that centers us at 10. So that's that line that Jose drew across the table with the water, is that 10. And by going down to theta three times a week, you can center right over that line. That way, you can see what's going on in the physical, be aware of all of that, report it back to the spiritual and the mental, and get help about what you should do to get guidance without having to do anything. It will just pop up on its own. And that's always so nice when the information just comes to us. Now, one of the most important things about this visualization enhancement drill that we're going to give you next is that this is a bridging drill between the conscious mind, the alpha brainwave, which is now conscious because you've learned how to stretch your cognitive functionings down to about 10 cycles of brainwave activity and still keep the chunking up abilities there. And now you're learning how to chunk down into what we call theta brainwave, which is at seven cycles of brainwave activity. And this is the frequency that has been proven time and time again to be the frequency of remote viewing and the frequency of energy healing which is basically 7.1 to 7.3 on the Schumann resonance factor. Now, when you do the bridging without doing theta, that means that you could go down there, but what would happen at theta, at seven cycles of brainwave activity, when you came back up, you wouldn't remember anything that happened. So now your consciousness, the bridge, alpha, goes to theta, you're aware of what's going on at theta, you come back up and you can use it at alpha and you can use it at beta, so it's very, very important. Now, what Jose Silva did is when he built in the remote viewing drills, he built them in with something that's very, very familiar to everybody and something that most people have good feelings about. So there are attractor fields in there that help and enhance the visualization skills. He would use the house, something everybody has, then he would start you with things you're familiar with. He would start you with the outside of the house. And then when you learned how to do the remote viewing of the house, you scanned in the pattern that your brain had already been trained in, which is scanning left to right, top to bottom, just like we read the page of a book. So it's nothing new. It's nothing different. It's just a different use of an old skill you already have done again at alpha down to theta and new dimensions of the mind that most people don't have communication skills on. So that's basically what he was doing there. He would have you scan the outside of the house. He would then have you go into the living room. You have good feelings about the living room. And then he would have you facing the south wall. Now, the south wall is very, very important because Jose Silva found out when he was training psychics 
that they all performed much, much, much better when they're facing the south wall. For some reasons, the frequencies of the earth would align better with the frequencies of the energy body and of the mind when they're facing the south wall. So make sure, you're, at least in your imagination, you put the south wall of your house there mentally so it does work good for you. Now, he's also doing something else here is he's teaching everybody to pay attention to details. This is a cognitive skill called chunking down. This is a skill of genius. In other words, to take something that you already know and to do something new, different, and better with it takes a skill called chunking down. So pay attention. Pay attention to the roof, chunking down. Pay attention to the wall, scanning left to right, and focus in on whatever your attention is drawn to you. This is, again, a chunking skill, but now he's using unconscious hookups to the conscious mind, whatever your attention is drawn to. And at this level, your cognitive mind, the thinking part of you, the personality part, will now start focusing on the details you've been programming for, and he's building it into this remote viewing visualization enhancement drill. And so focus on anything that attracts you. Now, this is one of those skills that you go, well, where could I ever use this skill? Actually, a remote viewing skill can be used for about every problem you have, and we're going to have other sessions on how to use it with health and how to use it with relationships and things of this nature. But just again, I was driving back from a seminar I gave in Sacramento, California, and I'm about halfway back to Medford, Oregon, and all of a sudden I noticed the oil pressure gauge on my vehicle dropped to zero which means big trouble if you're going to have to have a motor repaired. So I pulled over to the side, and I'm not a mechanic. I had no clue what to do. So it's about 11 p.m. at night, and I phoned up AAA, and they said, well, we can't have a man there until tomorrow morning. And I said, okay. So I drove to the closest motel, parked my vehicle, went in, went to sleep. And when I'm sleeping, I had this dream that I saw this little sensor that had a plug unclipped from it. And I went, wow, what's that? And goes, it's oil sensing unit. And I went, that is so cool. And so the next morning, the AAA man comes out and I said, I wonder if it could be an oil sensor unit. Maybe it became unplugged. And he went under the front of the vehicle. And when he went under the front, I went, wait a minute, it's in the back of the vehicle. It's not in the front. And he goes, nope, this one's plugged in. And I said, well, maybe there's one in the back. And he goes, nah, this car doesn't have one in the back. I said, could you look? So he crawled under the back of the vehicle and he goes, my gosh, there is one back here, and it's unplugged. And he plugged it back in. We started up the car. It had oil pressure. It wasn't a doggone thing wrong with it. I got in my car and drove home. So remote viewing can help you. I remote view where I can find the gold first. I love the Illinois River back there in Medford area, Southern Oregon. They have a lot of gold deposits back there, and it's nice to go out and find gold every time you go out. Before I'd go out, I'd try to find gold, and all I got was sore knees. It's sort of neat because when Dennis was talking about finding the gold with the gold prospector, I just sort of tuned into what he was doing, and I saw a meander here, and I saw it too shallow, so it wouldn't drop off the water there in the gold. But right out here, I saw a ledge with a dip and a whole bunch of gravel right behind it. And that's what I saw, and I saw the gold going down into that. Now, there's a point here to be brought up. With remote viewing, we are stressing the visual senses because that's how Jose Silva did it, and he's very, very successful at doing it. We also have auditory senses, and we have kinesthetic senses. Like when Dennis said, and I felt drawn to the location of the tool I was trying to find. That's a kinesthetic awareness sense. That is also a form of remote viewing, and it works just as good as the visual, and different people will find different senses to use. And so when you're doing a remote viewing drill, you might want to just tie in, well, what do I smell when I get a hit visually? What do I feel when I get a hit visually? What do I touch is it rough? Is it harsh? Does it smell good? Does it smell bad? What do I hear if I would reach up and objectively scratch it with a hand? So you can bring in all of the senses. Do I feel good emotionally? Do I feel bad? Does it draw me to it? Does it push me away from it? This type of thing. We had a thing last night. I needed to get some vitamins, you know, because I left my vitamins at home for this trip. And I came here and I go to the cab driver and I'm with Dennis. And I said, I want to go to Walgreens. I want to get some vitamins. Well, he took us to Walmart. And, well, I went into Walmart because he took us there. I go in there and I go crazy. I don't know if fluorescent lights or what. And I noticed that every line had like 50 people there. 
And I'm going, I'm not going to wait here. And I said, could you take me to Walgreens? So we go to Walgreens. I go in there. And by the way, he said, yeah, I knew it felt bad when we stopped here. Okay, well, I felt bad too, but I didn't want to make waves with the poor cab driver. So we went right to Walgreens, went in, got it, came back out. I mean, it took three minutes for the whole thing. Go with the feelings, because if you're hooked into the remote viewing, into the tuning, it does work all the time. But again, work on the kinesthetics also. I was doing a research paper. I was looking for a book that was on some psychic developmental skills done back in 1882, and it was taught by Tibetan monks to the people in the Theosophy Society. And I couldn't find anything about it. I couldn't find what I wanted on the web, on the internet, none of that stuff there. So I did a program in remote viewing, and I left it with the third scene that I found the product, okay? And I also found another book on the web that I wanted, and it was at a bookstore in Portland, Oregon called Northwestern Bookstores. So I go into Northwestern Bookstores. I pick up the other book. It's a $6 book. Couldn't find it in any place in Medford. But as I'm going out of the door, I get this feeling. I go, where's your metaphysical section? And he points, and I went right over there, reached down, I grabbed this book, I picked it up, and it has every experiment ever done by the Miniature Institute out of Topeka, Kansas, by Dr. Elmer Green on that psychic exercise and drill done by the Tibetan monks in 1882. I mean, it was awesome. So my point is, is remote viewing works a lot of different ways but you have to have the alpha developed, you have to have the theta developed, you must be able to tune into those feelings, into those thoughts. I get a lot of auditories, I get things that come in, I, like a voice is speaking to them every once in a while. Sometimes I get drawn to it, like I was drawn to that special report in the bookstore. Sometimes I get a visual, so it depends, it really depends. There is one thing that's brought up a lot of times by clients, and when they first see that you can do it, they say, well, yeah, you can do it, but I can't do it. And we found out that in every case, if they do the drills and do health cases, at least 10 health cases with people they're concerned about, they will learn how to do it because they will get verifiable feedback. A health case is when someone gives you... um, somebody's sick in their presence, they might have a problem with their heart, they might have an upset stomach, they might have just been in a car accident, something along this, but they don't give you any details about what is wrong with them or what is right with them. The first health case I ever got, when I visualized them, I scanned this person left to right, top to bottom, just like we're doing right here, and I went through and I go, oh, she's got a great attitude, she's skinny. I said, but all of her knuckles are really bony, and in every one of her joints, she has all this white stuff. Well, that's what she had. She had arthritis of her hands, and she could hardly move them. So my job at that time was to take all that white stuff out mentally, doing another technique we're gonna be learning shortly, which is called remote influence, okay, instead of remote viewing. But you'll notice that all these tools that we're giving you in the Silva Ultramind Systems course are tied together. One links into another, links into another, So you got to be able to do remote viewing to make sure that the remote influence is right. It's very easy to do, even though the remote influence is much easier to do than the remote viewing. So let's say that you're doing a health case and they give you the name, they give you the address, and they give you the location where the person lives, but they don't tell you anything about him. And then you do a casework on it and they write it down as you do it and then they confirm for you. And so then when you're still at level, they go back and they verify what all your hits were. So your mind is now focusing in on all the hits instead of all the misses. Some people will go back and they go, oh, you screwed that one up. No, no, you didn't mess that one up. What you did is you weren't calibrating right. You were on the wrong frequency. You might've picked up somebody else. You might've been using your imagination, but you wanna use your imagination to tune into what that person is. And you only get that through practice. And so we recommend, you know, at least 10 health cases. The reason we recommend health cases is because when you work on the living organism and you care about them, then the desire is there. You want to help them. The expectancy is there because you've got the skill and the belief is there because you've seen other people do it. So now it will work. Now it'll tune in. But again, it takes you doing the drill and do it with something minor. Do it with someone that has a headache. When we were working out last night, 
I did as a casework, something that's very, very loving to me and that I care a lot about. And I, I noticed something in this person's field that I had noticed before because they're such a part of my life that I didn't think about them as working a case on them. So I worked a case on her last night just to help her out a lot. And so that's what you do is you make sure you do the drills and health cases is the easiest thing to work on. Now, you'll also start remembering, you'll get a feeling, and you'll start remembering the feelings that you have, and then all you'll do is remember the feeling when you do the health case, and review a feeling before you go back to do another health case, and then review the feeling before you go back and do any type of remote viewing, and the feeling will attach you to the right frequency to work into that new thing that you're remote viewing. One way to make sure that you learn how to do these correctly is learn how to just trust your feelings. A good way to do that is go ahead and use the workbook that you're getting along with this and go back in there and record all your successes. And then before you go back and do another case work, another remote viewing work, go over all your successes from the workbook and then just tune in to the feelings that you had at that and then go to level keeping those in mind as you go there. And that will make sure you go into the right brain hemisphere with your remote viewing, but have the conscious control from the left brain hemisphere. So it's all working together to get you the remote viewing skills. So make sure you use that workbook. Now get ready for your next drill, the visualization enhancement drill. This is the Visualization Enhancement Mental Training Exercise of Jose Silva's Ultramind System. I'm John LaTourette, and I'll be your guide. In the background, you will hear the gentle tapping of the theta sound, a natural sound that will help your brain adjust to lower frequencies. This recording is to be used with eyes closed, so do not play it when you are driving or performing any other activity that requires the use of your eyesight. Remember that if, at any time, you feel uncomfortable, Readjust your position to make yourself more comfortable. If you feel you must open your eyes for any reason, then open your eyes and make yourself comfortable. If you open your eyes, then go back to the beginning of the recording and start over. Anytime you desire to relax, mentally or verbally repeat the word, relax, and you will relax physically and mentally. This mind training exercise is adapted from one originally copyrighted by Jose Silva of Laredo, Texas in 1969 after 25 years of research. New material on this recording is copyrighted in the year 2003 by Silva Ultramind Systems. Reproduction for redistribution is strictly prohibited. Now prepare for the visualization enhancement exercise by finding a comfortable position. We will start this exercise with the three to one method. Find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, Mentally repeat and visualize number three, three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I am going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your throat. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest externally and internally. Relax your abdominal area externally and internally. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now and more so every time you practice.
to enter mental relaxation level two, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times, and you are at level two. Level two is for mental relaxation, where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To improve mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To go to your center, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I am going to count from 10 to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. 10, nine, feel going deeper, eight, seven, six, deeper and deeper, five, four, three, deeper and deeper, two, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. Laws of programming. The following laws are to be considered when programming. Do to others only what you like others to do to you. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. The solution must be the best for everybody concerned. The solution must help at least two or more persons. The solution must be within the possibility area. Principles to keep in mind when programming. The following principles apply to programming. Objective physical communication takes place at the beta left brain dimension using the objective physical senses. The hearing is used for perception and the voice is used for transmission. Subjective spiritual communication takes place at the alpha right brain dimension by using the spiritual senses. Visualization is used for perception and imagination is used for transmission. In the objective physical dimension, the past is behind us, the present is our present position, and the future is ahead of us. In the subjective spiritual dimension, the past is to your right, the present is centered straight ahead, and the future is to your left. We will now program effective sensory projection for your success. We will program information through the use of mental projection. We will establish subjective points of reference at the imaginative dimension, the subjective dimension, at different levels and depths as you project yourself mentally to your home in order to improve your ability to recall and visualize its appearance. In a moment, I am going to count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers. At that time, you will imagine yourself to be standing about 30 feet in front of your home. You will study the outer appearance of your home, scanning the scene. You will start at the top left of the scene and go from left to right, just as you do when reading a page of a book. You will then go to the left side of the scene again, but a little lower than before, and again go from left to right. You will continue going a little lower each time until you reach the ground level. I will now count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers so that you may imagine projecting yourself to the front of your home. One, two, three. Project yourself mentally to the front of your home, standing about 30 feet from it. Begin scanning the scene at the upper left-hand corner, going slowly from left to right, lower each time until you reach the ground level. You will go slowly and stop to study anything that attracts your intelligence while scanning, such as the roof, windows, window frames, doors. Study anything that attracts you. Begin by studying the roof of your home. What material is it made of?
What color is it? Continue studying everything that attracts you until you reach the ground level. Concentrate on colors. Take your time. Study colors. Study the colors. Take your time. Study the colors. Scan the ground level. Now, focus your attention on the front door and concentrate on the doorknob or handle. Mentally move close to the door, close enough to touch the door handle. Expect the door to appear to increase in size as you get closer. Mentally touch the doorknob or handle, open the door, mentally enter your home, closing the door behind you. Mentally walk towards your living room. Once you have entered your living room, stand at the center facing the south wall. You have been here before. You have been here during daylight hours. You have been here during nighttime with the lights turned on and the lights turned off. I am now going to count from one to three. At the count of three, it will be daytime. One, two, three. It is now daytime. You are standing at the center of your living room facing the south wall. You have been here before. You know how much light enters this room during the day and you recognize what it is in front of you. What is behind you? You know what is to your left and what is to your right. At the count of three, we will change the scene to nighttime with the house lights turned on. One, two, three. The scene has changed to nighttime and you are still standing in the middle of the living room facing the south wall. You have been here before, and you know what is in front of you. What is behind you? What is to your left? And what is to your right? At the count of three, the lights will go out. One, two, three. The lights are out and you are standing in darkness facing the south wall. Although the living room looks dark, you still know what is in front of you. What is behind you? What is to your left? And what is to your right? At this time, concentrate on the wall before you, the south wall. You can sense it being a certain distance away, and you know what is on this wall. You also know the color of this wall. Use your memory, your knowing, your sensing to make a study of your south wall. Scan this wall as you did the front of your home, beginning at the upper left-hand corner and going from left to right, a little lower each time until you reach the floor level. Study everything that attracts you, pictures, curtains, and furniture. Especially concentrate on objects that contain color. Take your time.
study the colors. Study the colors. Take your time. Whenever you desire to improve your visualization, recall previous impressions of something that you have seen or imagined. To further improve your ability to visualize and imagine, you can modify and change the images in any way you desire, employing changes in color, characters, situations, structures, and in results. Whatever you perceive with your imagination in this dimension, you can use as points of reference in the future. It is now an accomplished fact that subjective points of reference have been established at the imaginative dimension, at the subjective dimension, at different levels and different depths. To function at these levels and to use these points of reference, all you need is to have a sincere desire to solve problems. Your mind will automatically seek out these points of reference where you will perceive and become aware of information you can use to solve such problems, and this is so. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind and at these points of reference, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help yourself, your loved ones, physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind or these points of reference to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind, nor will you be able to use these points of reference. You will always use these levels of the mind and these points of reference in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when we move on, we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I am going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before. You'll have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache, no ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears, no ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of your mind. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep. Four, five, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Let's talk about something very important to all of us. Let's talk about how we relate to other people. Imagine how you would feel 
if everyone you contacted, if everyone you know or met connected with you on a very deep level, if family and friends became more open to you, if they became warmer, they had a deeper understanding of you, you had a deeper understanding of them, that all the little things that pop up between others just don't enter into your relationships, what would that be worth to you? Well, the recording that you just plugged into your player is going to help you to learn how to have an instant rapport with people. It's going to help you learn to build deeper relationships with friends and family and loved ones. Jose Silva taught us how to deepen these relationships and move them out of the territory of the petty differences and find a common, deeper ground on which we can agree. Now, when you begin to work on a relationship, and you might have one in mind, let's do the best thing first. Let's check ourselves. And you can do this by going deep to level, by listening to the alpha sound, and then looking at yourself from that point of view. What are your motives in this relationship? Do you want to control? Do you want to manipulate? Now remember who we're asking for help in this program. We're asking help from higher intelligence. You remember the five laws? How is it going to help them? Will it benefit two or more people? Will it make this a better place to live? So look at your motives and what you want to happen and hold them up against the five laws. That's why it's so important to review these recordings. So you hold up what you want next to the five laws and see if they fit. Now, there was a great poet named Rumi, and he said, Out beyond right and wrong, there is a field, and I'll meet you there. Gandhi said, Any disagreement is the same truth seen from two different points of view. What we're working towards here is a partnership, a deeper connection with the people around you, a connection so deep that it moves away from the pettiness of the world and moves into a deeper place where we have more common ground. Take, for instance, a family or a business organization. They might be spread out all over the globe. The deeper you go into the company, the deeper you go into the family, the more the common ground. The closer you get to the core, the more common ground. So now that we've checked out our own motives and held them up against the laws of programming, let's look at them. Let's remote view this person. So use again the alpha tape until you get proficient and have good successes. And visualize the person that you'd like to become closer and more connected to then as you have them in front of you, you step inside them, put on their head, and look at the situation, look at the way they see things, and look at the situation through their eyes. How do they see the situation? What do they see happening? What do they think your motives are? What do they want? And how do they see you? How are they interpreting what you do? It's so important to see the world that they see. There's a great saying in Spanish, Por cada cabeza es un mundo. For every head there is a world. They have their world. They have the way they see the world. And if you want to establish a deeper rapport, then see them through their eyes. See you through their eyes. This is a technique that will be available to you that can clear up 90% of any disagreement. So what we're after is understanding first. 
once you understand someone, then you can move the relationship into love. Now, this will work with children. It works with loved ones. It can work with a boss, someone at work, a customer, or a friend. So practice. Enjoy. One of the greatest things about what Jose has taught us and what you're listening to on this recording is that you have a whole world out there in which you can practice and improve and gain a deeper understanding of people. Jose said, connect with people in the alpha level, centered. And he said, that is where the common ground is. The deeper you get into your own consciousness and that person's consciousness, the more connected we are. Everyone wants more love. Everyone would like to open their hearts and love more. We've all been up to the edge of what we know as far as love and emotion and then step back from it. We were set up to love, and at the same time, it just doesn't seem like we fulfill our destiny to spread love on this planet. So I use the Silva ESP system to look at a situation. Suppose I'm having difficulty in dealing with someone, or I meet someone that I say, oh, look, they are difficult to love. And I believe what the great teacher told us 2,000 years ago. He said, physician, heal thyself. So when I see someone or something going in the world that I say, oh, that out there is hard to love, then I know that there's something inside me that needs to be changed. When I see someone and I have a difficulty in loving them, I know that that difficulty in loving does not reside inside them. That difficulty in loving resides in the person who has this heart here. So what I do is look inside myself and I see how is it difficult to love this person? How is it difficult to love what's going on over there? And I'll find similar experiences inside me. Now, these are sympathetic experiences inside me that are keeping me from loving. I took a saxophone lesson one time, and when I hit a certain note, a guitar in the corner started vibrating and was ready to fall over. And I asked the instructor, I said, what is making that guitar move? He said, that is sympathetic vibration. And he got up and he went over and he loosened one of the guitar strings, and then I could hit that note without that guitar vibrating. So when I look out on the world and I see something out there that I have difficulty in loving that upsets me, then I go inside and I loosen my string that's tuned to that frequency of what I see in that person or what I see in that action. And I release those experiences that I have that I'm reminded of when I look at that person. And then I realize that that difficulty in loving resides with me, not with them. I also learn to remote view them using the Silva method, and I get some understanding about what they're going through. I learn to literally go and stand inside their shoes using these exercises in this program, and I see the world from their eyes, and I feel how they feel, and I feel where they hurt, and I understand how they're acting that way. And then I give them the appropriate love tuned to that action, tuned to the way they're acting, because I have cleared that in myself. I have cleared the obstacle that kept me from loving them that was inside me. Most of us, we're out here trying to rearrange this other person so that we can love them. Physician, heal thyself. And that's what this program has helped me to do. Also at Alpha, I program. I think of things that I love and I build on that, and I feel what it feels like. And at Alpha, I go into a deep feeling, and I build on what I love. I think of people that I love, and then I think of people that maybe I have a little bit more difficulty in loving, and I see how that changes, and I learn to love them. So you're acting 
as an agent here on the planet for higher intelligence, you are an agent of love. You see what needs loving in the world, and you bring that love through you. Now, I firmly believe that if I look out and see something happen in the world, I must have some kind of receptors in here to recognize that. When they're programming a robot to visually see a glass of water, they have to put that pattern of a glass of water inside the robot or it won't perceive it. And again, since all this technology is replicating us, I have that program of this person that's hard to love inside me. I have that program in there. I have that picture inside me. So I change that inside me. I let that go. And as that love comes through me to that other person, it heals me, just like warm water warms up a pipe. And that's how I try to stay more and more loving. Every day, something will be put in front of my face and higher intelligence say, oh, Dennis, Here's the next place where you need to learn to love. And I step up and say, okay, what do I do to fix myself so I can love this? And that's where love begins in my heart. Now let's talk about parenting. When you speak to a child, you're using your voice. Those vibrations move through the air, it touches their eardrum, and it goes through the auditory nervous system. Now they have filters and biases set up along the auditory nervous system. Nobody knows how to tune you out like a child. So how many times have you been speaking to a child on the beta outside physical dimension and have them just tune you out. So now you can learn to talk to your child from the inside out. You can reach them where they live. And again, check your motives. Is this a control issue, a convenience matter on your part, or is this some fundamental thing that your child needs to learn about getting along with people? Now, once a parent asked me to help them with their child, there was a big battle about doing the schoolwork, big battle about homework every night, and the child would sit there for three and four hours not doing their homework. Well, I said, sure, I'll be happy to come and talk to the child. Well, I remote viewed the child and then called the parent back with the answer, and that night everything was different. You see how little effort it takes on the inside, at the inner dimensions, and how much effort this parent was putting out in the outer levels? It's like trying to bang down a door when all you have to do is turn the key. What I remote viewed in that child was that child was angry. That child was not getting enough time with the parents. Now, the child was saying, Okay, if you're not going to spend time with me one way, I'm going to force you to spend time with me another way. So what I advise the parents to do is to find a more organic, a more happy way to spend time with the child and to sit down and write out a schedule for the week, an hour here, 30 minutes there, 15 minutes there, and stick to that schedule and they used the child's input about what they wanted. And the child did their homework that night very quickly so that they could spend time together and do something fun that the child wanted to do. Now, you can also teach this to your children. Imagine how it would help your child in their life if they were having problems with a teacher or a playmate at school or a friend or some pressure from a peer group. If they could look at that person remotely on a deeper level and find out what their motives are, can you see how quickly peer pressure about drugs or sex would just vanish when the child could remotely view and understand what their true motives were and how afraid they were and how they wanted your child to just 
join them in this activity so they wouldn't be so afraid and feel so alone, that ability would help your child for the rest of their lives. In Native American traditions, part of the job of the parents was to teach the child how to function in the village. The other part of their job and the most important part of their job was to teach the child how to function in a working, conscious relationship with the spirit world, as they called it, to get help, to get advice, to have what they called a totem, an animal that would come and give them advice. And that was the job of the parents. Now, it sounds like a really great job. And it sounds like a job now that you can do because you purchased this album. Now you can prepare your child to go through life connected to all the help, all the information, all the inventions, all the genius mentality that has ever lived and ever will live. Your child before puberty is at Alpha. So they can listen to some of the conditionings with you and you can practice with them. You can give them their own workbook, the same workbook that you're using in this course. And your child can take their rightful place to stand with a foot in each dimension, to be able to handle anything in their lives and live the rich, full life that any parent would want for their children. Jose had some great techniques for communicating with his children. At a convention in Laredo, Texas, he was talking about influencing children, of course, in a positive way, using the five laws of programming. And he said he had given his daughters a picture of himself that sat on the dresser in their room, and it was a big picture, one of the 14 by somethings. And he said he programmed the picture with his aura range by holding it in his hands and being at alpha, just like you can do now, and hold it in his hands and was thinking about how good his daughters were going to be on dates and how much in control they were going to be and how they would go along with their father's wishes about what did and did not happen on a date. Well, later that afternoon, I walked into a room and there were four of Jose Silva's daughters. And I told them about the picture. And they said, oh, you're kidding. Are you telling me the truth? I said, yes, I'm telling you the truth. They said, we remember getting dressed for our dates and we'd be thinking about our date, you know, what the boyfriend might or might not do. And we'd keep looking over there and there would be this picture of my dad with this really stern look. And we'd say, oh, okay, well, I better not do that. And, oh, they, they went and gave him, <laughs> they went and gave him a lot of trouble about that picture. So there are ways to influence your child. You can go and lay in their bed during the afternoon when they're at school, when they're not there, and you can go to the alpha level and you can visualize wonderful, wonderful abilities and techniques and talents for this child. If they're having trouble in an area of math, you can lay down in their bed and explain it to them while you're in the alpha dimension. Their bed will soak up your auric vibrations, just as film will soak up the vibrations of light. And when they sleep in that bed, they will be going way down through all their brainwave patterns four times a night. So this information, this programming that you've done while laying in their bed will be spread through their entire consciousness. They'll get it physically. Every cell of their body will be in that aura range. You can energize a glass of water or whatever beverage your child loves to drink. You simply go to Alpha, put your fingers on the glass, spread your fingers, spread your thumbs apart, 
and make sure your fingers don't touch when they're coming around the glass. And hold the glass right up to your forehead. And then go to Alpha and have this picture ready that you just project into the glass of water. So at Alpha level, you see this picture, this end result, and make sure it's an end result going into the glass of water. Now there's been research done with surface tensiometers. Now that's a little platinum ring that a very sensitive machine drops onto the surface of the water and it starts to pull it back up and you can actually see the water come up. We've all seen surface tension on water, the way it bubbles or the way it forms drops on the table. And as they pull this platinum ring back up, they measure the surface tension in dynes. So they've done double blind experiments where they've had a healer or someone who can go to alpha. That's all that's necessary. And by now you can do that. They'll come into the room, put their hands around this glass of water and go to alpha. That's all they have to do. And then walk out of the room and then a scientist who doesn't know what the experiment's about or what the test results are supposed to be or not supposed to be will come in and measure the surface tension of that water and the surface tension of that water has reduced. In other words, that person standing with that glass within their aura has changed the hydrogen bonding system in that water. This is an old study. It's already been looked at. So you can energize a beverage and give it to your child. If you're cooking food for them, keep in mind some goal that your child is working for or some better grades or better relationships. And you'll notice the difference. When they drink that water, when they eat that food, that information that you put in that water and food is going to go to every cell in their body. You can also influence your child at a distance by going to Alpha, like you can do, and remote viewing his desk at school or her desk at school. You can energize that desk with a program. Again, that's a picture, that's a visualization and a feeling that when they sit in that desk, they're alert, they're ready to learn, their brain is receptive, they will remember the lessons and they can recall previous lessons, that they have very good penmanship, that they have good writing skills, and you have influenced that desk at school so that every time they sit in it, they'll do better and better and better. If you have a loved one at a distance, you can send them a present in the mail. You can energize a jar of jam. You can energize a piece of clothing by holding that clothing, going to Alpha like you already know how to do, and send them that piece of clothing. Again, making sure that it's best for all concerned, that it's going to help them, that two or more people are going to benefit from it. Follow the laws of programming. Now, you can also influence someone in a distance with a repeater effect. Now, a radio station or a TV station sends out a signal and there'll be a tower that grabs that signal, raises the modulation, and sends that signal out further. That's called the repeater effect. So if you're in the presence of a person that is going to go meet the person you'd like to remotely influence, then you influence that person. You remote view that person or you're standing there shaking their hand while they're in your aura, you influence that person and put into their aura what you want the person they're going to meet to receive, and they will transmit it for you. And you simply visualize that picture going into this person's aura, and when they meet and are in aura range of the other person, you visualize the transfer, and it will happen. Jose did many studies Every one of these doings that you're being taught, he studied, he researched, he did double-blind experiments. Every one of these has been proven. So now you can influence someone directly. You can influence an object that they're going to be around. 
You can influence something they're going to eat. You can influence something they're going to wear or a gift. You can help them from a distance. You can be effective at a distance. So by using this recording, you can help others to have a much better life. You can connect with others, clear up difficulties, and live a utopian life. With so many friends, everyone you meet will be a friend because you will be programming yourself and developing a habit of connecting with them on a deep level. You'll be developing a habit of sending energy and information to them on a deep level that will be helping them because you've been following these five laws of programming. So all of these techniques are designed to work with your intention and they're designed to become automatic. What is really interesting about relationships, remote viewing, remote influence, is that sometimes you can pick up messages from other people that you had no idea you were going to be picking up because they are influencing you remotely from a different dimension. I was moving to Colorado Springs and I was driving along through Montana. It's like 3.30 a.m. I am basically three quarters of the way asleep, but I'm sort of there in theta, making sure I don't slide off that road that has about 12 inches of hard ice on it, driving my pickup four-wheel drive. And I started getting these images of seeing this person outside the window. And I kept ignoring him, but he kept waving at me going, hey, hey, John, hey, John. And it's one of my best friends. Unfortunately, he'd been dead about a year. And so I'm driving along and I'm going, Leon, you're not there. Go away. He goes, no, no, I'm here. And I go, okay, I'm too tired to argue. I go, okay, so you're here. So what do you want? He says, Tell my wife that all the money problems are going to be over on Friday. And I go, what money problems? Because I didn't even know about it. And he goes, well, just tell her that. And I said, well, why don't you tell her that? You don't, don't exist. You're not here. And he goes, no, no, you tell her that because I can talk to you. I can't get through to her, but she's really nervous. She's really scared. I said, okay, anything to get rid of this guy. Okay, I'll tell her what you said exactly word for word and poof, he disappears. So I drive on into Colorado Springs, and I phone up my sister early in the morning, and I go, this weird thing happened last night, and I related the story to her, and she got this really weird sound to her. Now, what I didn't know is that she had had a lot of money problems after he had died, you know, paying off the bills for the funeral and the medical expenses and all these things, and she had borrowed a bunch of money from my wife without telling me. And I guess my wife was getting a little bit irritated about the whole problem and the whole story there. And what Leon had done is he had taken out death insurance on his house and they didn't send the money until that Friday. It was a year later and she didn't know about it, but she got this big settlement all in the mail on Friday, paid off my wife, paid off all of her bills and she was happy ever after. And I'm going, huh, that's an interesting coincidence but that just shows me that sometimes relationships can work across other dimensions too. I have a friend of mine. He's been a client of mine for many years and he's actually a good friend of mine too. And he was having fantastic relationship problems. He got divorced. He finally got so embittered towards women, he couldn't stand being around them, but he still wanted to be around them because he loved romance. So he came in for some counseling and I said, well, when you think about women, what do you think? And he gave me all those things that he hated about women. And I said, well, what happens when you go up to a woman and try to get a date? He goes, well, they all turned me down. I said, do you have any idea why? And he goes, no. And I says, well, it's how you're programming them with your own energy field because you're thinking about, well, I want X, but they're going to do A, B, and C afterwards. So let's see what I can do. I said, well, why don't you just change that? And at level, what you do is use the mental video technique and, you know, put your present problem that you have, 
put the solution you want to have and then put how you have to change yourself to get the solution you want to have. And I said, why don't you just start blessing all the attributes about women that you love and forget about all those attributes that you don't like and don't want to be around. I said, because the more you think about what you don't want, the more you get what you don't want. The more you think about what you do want, the more you get what you do want. But bless those positive characteristics. So I gave him a drill where he would bless them when he was at his center. And within about three days, he started getting dates. Within about a month, he had more dates than he could handle. After about six months, he is bored out of his gourd because he's got too many women around. And so I said, well, do you want to get attached to one? Do you want to get married? What do you want? He goes, well, I want to have a good living companion that I'm happy with. I said, well, find one that you want and take all the blessing you've been doing for all those women out there and just bless that one woman and see what happens. So he's been living with her for three years now. And so he's happy. They have bought themselves a farm and they're both really happy. And I go, that's cool because that's a relationship that fit his wants, desires, needs, and also fit hers perfectly. So it gets down to in all these conditioning cycles when you're learning whether it's a mental video or the three scenes technique or it's a business course or a health course, you have to pull into what we call the positive thinking versus the negative thinking mode. And I know it's very redundant. You've heard it 100,000 times. Unfortunately, it's still very, very basic and very important. Negative thinking is thinking about what you don't want. We have a creative mechanism. When we think about what we don't want, we get it. When we think about what we do want, we do get that. And it's that simple. Sometimes there's actual drills that you can do with a human aura when you're in their presence that works really good. I was with my boy uh, three days ago and we were at this restaurant and there was this waitress over there and I'd seen her before and I sort of knew her. So I waved at her and she dropped her eyes, looked at the ground, turned away. And I went, hmm, interesting. And my boy goes, hey, dad, she don't like you much. And I go, oh, well, let's see. And so she walks by later on and I look at her and I smile and I wave. Okay, hmm. she dropped her eyes and looked away. So as I'm getting ready to pay my bill, I walk up to her and I basically look at her and smile and I open up my energy chakra right through the heart and then I took my heart and I made a figure eight between my heart and her heart and pulled that energy back into my heart. She looked up, got a great big smile on her face, reached over and caressed my arm. And my boy goes, Dad, what did you just do? And I said, I energized her heart chakra and I hooked up our energy fields together. And techniques like that do work person to person if you mean it. If you don't mean it and if you are fake, then they'll pick up the fakeness. And she got the reality and saw I was a different person than she thought I was. And so you can actually change people's concept of you by just figurating their energy field from your own heart chakra at the same time, using their aura and using your aura. Now, one question that comes up a lot is how can I protect myself from the negative thoughts of others? Now, what I did is when I was teaching at the World Convention here about two years ago, I did a drill with some of the top mind control trainers of the country, and they're really good people. They're very, very good at what they do, but they haven't been taught certain drills yet that we actually do in the Ultramind ESP systems. And what happens is when somebody else thinks a thought and they're within your auric field of 30 feet or less, then their thought will affect you unless you strengthen your own aura first. Now, if you strengthen your own aura first, then there's no way that's gonna affect you because it can't get through your aura. Your aura is your energy field, your protective spacesuit around your body. So one of the easiest ways to build your own self-protective aura or your spacesuit is to build up your own energy field. That is done very, very easy. All you do is you tap vigorously under the bottom of the collarbone right by your sternum on both sides. Tap it very hard for about 15 to 20 taps. Okay, as you breathe in deeply, smile. Breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the mouth. It hooks up a certain type of connection there between the center and governing meridians. And so you tap in there very, very hard. Then you tap in the middle of the chest very, very hard, which starts and stimulates the thymus gland, which is the immune system gland of the whole body. 
and then you come down right below the nipples and one inch to the sides you use you tap very vigorously right there that's spleen point 21 that turns on your immune system and your human aura will just bubble out and get very very strong and so those thoughts won't affect you now the way to seal in those thoughts is you now zip up your energy field now the zipper of the energy field on the central meridian starts down by the pubic bone and you just zip it up to the lower lip as you do a affirmative thought and the thought is my energy field is strong then you lock it just like you lock a gate so nothing can get in you do that three times and then you do the same thing you zip up from your tailbone up your spine in the back reach over your shoulders grab that zipper pull it up over your head and down to your upper lip and lock that one as you do the same affirmation and you do it three times that will lock and seal your energy field so people even if they're within 30 feet their energies will not affect you now there are other ways of doing a self-protection device and that's the one that they give in the silva ultramine conditioning cycles so if they're zipped up and you know that they're locked, you can actually zip them up mentally. And as you zip them up mentally in your mind, you can say negative thoughts do not bother me, but positive thoughts bring me the benefits and advantages I desire. And so you can use the Silva conditioning at Alpha Brainwave, at Theta Brainwave, along with the physical movements, and you have a shield that will stop almost anything. And the research has shown that when you do programming at Alpha Theta, using conscious inductive thinking, it's a thousand times more potent than when done at beta. In the next conditioning cycle, we will work on one relationship project. So at this time, select a relative, a friend, or a person whose face you can remember easily. We will later refer to this person as the subject. So join me on session 12 for remote viewing for relationships. This is the remote viewing for relationships mental training exercise of Jose Silva's Ultramind system. I'm John LaTourette and I'll be your guide. In the background you will hear the gentle tapping of the alpha sound, a natural sound that will help your brain adjust to the alpha rhythm. This recording is to be used with eyes closed, so do not play it when you are driving or performing any other activity that requires the use of your eyesight. Remember that if, at any time, you feel uncomfortable, readjust your position to make yourself more comfortable. If you feel you must open your eyes for any reason, then open your eyes and make yourself comfortable. If you open your eyes, then go back to the beginning of the recording and start over. Anytime you desire to relax, mentally or verbally, repeat the word relax and you will relax physically and mentally. This mind training exercise is adapted from one originally copyrighted by Jose Silva of Laredo, Texas in 1969 after 25 years of research. New material on this recording is copyrighted in the year 2003 by Silva Ultramind Systems. Reproduction for redistribution is strictly prohibited. Now prepare for the remote viewing for relationships exercise by finding a comfortable position. We will start this exercise with the three to one method. Find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize number three, three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I am going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your throat. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest externally and internally. Relax your abdominal area, externally and internally. 
relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now, and more so every time you practice. To enter mental relaxation level two, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times, and you are at level two. Level two is for mental relaxation, where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To improve mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To go to your center, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I am going to count from ten to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. 10, 9, feel going deeper. 8, 7, 6, deeper and deeper. 5, 4, Three, deeper and deeper. Two, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. Laws of Programming the following laws are to be considered when programming. Do to others only what you like others to do to you. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. The solution must be the best for everybody concerned. The solution must help at least two or more persons. The solution must be within the possibility area. Principles to keep in mind when programming. The following principles apply to programming. Objective physical communication takes place at the beta left brain dimension using the objective physical senses. The hearing is used for perception and the voice is used for transmission. Subjective spiritual communication takes place at the alpha right brain dimension by using the spiritual senses. Visualization is used for perception, and imagination is used for transmission. In the objective physical dimension, the past is behind us. The present is our present position, and the future is ahead of us. In the subjective spiritual dimension, the past is to your right. The present is centered straight ahead, and the future is to your left. We will now impress new information for your benefit, how to use remote viewing and remote influencing to improve relationships. When you need to work on a relationship problem, go to your center with a three to one method and project an image of the person that you desire to communicate with onto your mental screen. We will refer to this person as the subject. You can communicate with the subject subjectively while at your center. You can ask questions of the subject 
in order to learn more about what the subject thinks of the relationship. You can ask what the subject wants to receive from the relationship and what the subject is willing to contribute to the relationship. You can communicate subjectively with words and even more effectively with mental pictures. The conversations that you imagine between you and the subject will help you to create good mental pictures. To detect information about what the subject is thinking and experiencing, you can imagine that you are superimposing the subject's head over your own head as though you were putting on a helmet. Then you can put yourself in your subject's place and whatever you feel reflects the attitudes and feelings of your subject. While your subject's head is superimposed over your own, you can ask what the subject thinks about the relationship. You may ask what the subject would like to change about the relationship and then clear your mind for a moment of time by thinking of another topic. Then bring your attention back to the question that you asked. Whatever impression comes to you immediately after this will indicate the attitudes and feelings of your subject. You will then concentrate in this particular area. Remember, whenever you put the subject's head over your own, to remove it when you have completed your investigation. After you have detected your subject's attitudes and feelings about the relationship, then project an image that reflects the improvements that you desire in the relationship. You can talk with the subject subjectively in order to help you create the mental images of a beneficial relationship with everyone's needs being met and everyone happy with the relationship. Later, when you meet the subject objectively in the physical world, you can verbally reinforce anything that you told the subject when you were at your center and your subject will detect your true feelings and your desire for a relationship that benefits both of you and also benefits everyone else involved. I will now give you time to work on one relationship. At this time, select a relative, a friend, or a person whose face you can remember with least effort. We will refer to this person as the subject. Now recall the subject's face. Now study your subject's face, the facial features, the hair, eyes, eyebrows, nose, cheeks, the character of the face. Now recall details of the relationship that you have with this subject. Recall some recent interaction. Perhaps there is something about the relationship that you would like to improve. Perhaps there is a future interaction that you want to go smoothly. You can ask what the subject thinks about the relationship and clear your mind for a moment of time. Whatever impression comes to you immediately after that will tell you the attitude and feelings of your subject. You can imagine that you are superimposing the subject's head over your own to help you detect the attitudes and feelings of the subject. Remember. Whenever you put the subject's head over your own, to remove it when you have completed your investigation. Now mentally make any changes that you desire in the relationship, keeping in mind that the solution must be for the best of everybody concerned. You can work on any relationship in this manner at any time you desire. An excellent time to do this is in the morning when you first wake up. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind and at these points of reference, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help your loved ones physically and mentally. 
You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind or these points of reference to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind, nor will you be able to use these points of reference. You will always use these levels of the mind and these points of reference in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when we move on, we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I am going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before. You will have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache, no ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears, no ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of the mind. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep. Four, five, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Everyone likes to talk about finding their purpose in life. And let's look at the paradigm. Let's look at how people look at a purpose in life. Normally, they equate a purpose in life with what they do for money. Now, that's a very narrow arena to work on that issue about what is your purpose in life. They equate their purpose in life with what they do for their job. So let's widen out the view about the purpose in life. In fact, let's back off and get a big perspective on your purpose in life. And let's look at it from the view of higher intelligence. Now, all through this training course, we've been talking about going within and connecting with your source. Every mind exercise, every conditioning that you've heard John do for you has been aimed towards completing a connection between you and higher intelligence, higher consciousness, the mental and spiritual, whatever you perceive that to be. So let's look at a purpose in life from that point of view. Now, there was a gentleman who was in a small town and he was watching some bricklayers. And one bricklayer was just so happy and thrilled, and he was whistling and having a good time and laughing to himself, and the other bricklayer had a scowl on his face. He was angry. He griped at the people who brought him the mortar if they didn't bring it quickly enough. He was mad because the lunch truck was late. He just was having a terrible time. And right next to him was someone that was just happy, filled with joy in their life. So he couldn't resist. He walks across the street and says to the very negative person, what you doing? He turns around, he says, I'm laying bricks. What does it look like I'm doing? Well, he backed up a little bit and almost went across the street. And he says, well, I'm over here. So he goes over to the joyful person and he says, what are you doing? He said, I'm building the finest post office this town has ever seen. People will be able to come here and get letters from grandparents and communicate with grandchildren and get 
money or send money, send Christmas presents, and communicate with people all over the world in this wonderful, beautiful post office. That's the point of view to have is what are you doing in your life or what could you be doing in your life now that would bring the world together, that would help the world, that would do what higher intelligence is trying to help us to do, is to help with the evolution, with the advancement of human consciousness here on this planet. Now, so many people stand off to the side and gripe about the world the way it is. They gripe about their life the way it is. So let's go high atop a skyscraper that's being built. 30 floors above the ground. The lunch whistle blows, and everyone sits down to have lunch. And there was a new man. He sits down and starts to open his lunch. When he hears next to him, oh no, peanut butter and jelly again. He looks to his left, and there's the man looking at his sack, peanut butter and jelly again. That's all I get for lunch is peanut butter and jelly. I hate this stuff. He throws the sandwich down on the deck, stomps on it. The jelly squirts out the sides, and he kicks it over the edge tumbles off into infinity. Sits back down in a huff, folds his arms, very angry. So the new guy next to him is just, he's so surprised, he's shocked. He says, you you don't like peanut butter and jelly? He goes, I hate peanut butter and jelly. And there he goes again. So finally, he was just so curious, he wanted to help the guy. He says, uh, who, who, who fixes your lunch? He says, oh, I do. And that's what we do. We fix our own lunch. So when you're griping about your life or how the world is, you have the opportunity to change your world. You have the opportunity to find your purpose in life. Now, these exercises have been helping you to get down deep down inside yourself, where you live. In the next session, you'll hear John with a special mental exercise done by Jose Silva to help you go back to your childhood and remote view your childhood and see yourself in your childhood. Now, why would he do that? Because he wanted people to go back to a time when they still had their enthusiasm, their zest for life, their desires, and find out what their deepest desires were at that time. Now, so often in a family, even if the family cares, we aren't able as a child to fulfill our deep desires. There'll be a financial consideration, or maybe there's something else going on, or maybe there's stress in the family. And so we learn to put those away. And in this exercise, you'll be able to go back, see yourself as a child, and reconnect with that young part of you that you gave up so that you could make it through life much more easily. Albert Schweitzer talked about us as adults on a boat in the sea of life. And he said, the waves start getting a little rough, and it starts getting stormy, And we're afraid of sinking, so we throw out ballast. We throw out weight out of the boat, and we're throwing things out. And then our boat skims over the waves more lightly now, and we feel safer. What we threw out was our food and drink, so we're parched and thirsty. So we throw away things as we're growing up. We let go of childhood desires and wants and needs the things that are deep inside us. And then it's natural for people to look around and say, well, okay, if I'm not in touch with what I want on a deep level, what does everybody else want? What does everybody else think they need? What is everybody else trying for? And then we go for that. We want to make some money or have a prestigious job. 
And that becomes our purpose in life is to somehow fulfill that need that we're not in touch with. And whatever we go out and do, it's like eating waxed fruit. We go through the motions. It looks pretty. It looks nice. And it just doesn't satisfy us. Let's talk about going deep within, reconnecting with the child in us, and find out what we desire. Find out what would give us a sense of satisfaction and feed us. So you can use a mental video technique, the one that you've been perfecting. You can use the mental video technique to make a video of your dissatisfaction. And you can also put feelings in these videos. You can put feelings, you can put sounds. You want to fill it out and make it as clear as you can. Because when you're asking for help from the other side, you want to make sure they really know what the problem is. When you take your car to a mechanic, you want to make sure you really explain what is happening so that they'll fix the right thing. So, You bring your feelings up about how you feel, maybe unfulfilled. What am I doing here? Why did I come here? Bring your questions up and put them in that video. And then, to the best of your ability, go down into Alpha, and John will show you how to in a little while, and remote view back in time and back in that other place, you as a child and what you liked to do, what you enjoyed, how you felt. And then out of that can come what at the moment your best guess is about what you want to do in your life. And also remember those five laws of programming. Let's align what you want to do in your life with those five laws. Is it going to help someone else? Is this something that you would like done unto you? Will it help two people or more? Is it going to make this world a better place to live? Now, if you want to be a bricklayer, then fine. Put that in there that you want to be a bricklayer. Now, how can you help the world? Well, how did that second bricklayer help the gentleman who asked him what he was doing? He gave him a view. He transmitted a view of, look, I'm connected here. Everything we do here is connected, and what I do helps the world, and here's how it's going to help the world. So if you're a bricklayer or a banker or a teacher or a policeman, how can you do your job in such a way that's going to help the people on this planet to evolve, that's going to make this a better place to live, that's going to help two or more people? And use these golden rules, these laws of programming, to do your job in this video. And then at night now, set your computer to send this email off to higher consciousness. Because remember, Jose Silva has given you the email address of higher consciousness now and how to reach them. So at night, you'll log on while you're asleep at the Delta doorway You'll send this video through and then watch what starts coming back and watch for signs. Watch for that article that catches your eye about a certain school or watch for someone telling you about a job opening or watch when you just happen to turn on the television and there's a program about something that you might want to go do. You watch for signs and you head in that direction. You head in that direction And if it works, if it's easy, if it feels like you're going with the flow, then keep going. You see, we're talking about going with the flow here. We're talking about finding your purpose in life by using higher intelligence who has this big view of the big picture. They've got the long view, timeless. So when you align yourself with what higher intelligence wants you to do here on the planet and is ready to help you to do on the planet, it's like swimming in a river. 
Have you ever tried to swim upstream in a river? It's hard work. Just swim, swim, swim. You get exhausted. It's effort, effort, effort. You can't enjoy the scenery or enjoy the water. Now let's contrast that with someone who's floating downstream with the flow. Someone who's in tune with the flow of higher consciousness and what they're trying to get to happen here. Because you see someone swimming upstream has big trouble when a big log comes around the bend. Someone swimming downstream, they're relaxing, taking it easy, enjoying the view, enjoying themselves, enjoying the day, looking at the clouds and the sky. And when they encounter a big log, they can get up and ride on it and relax on what would turn others asunder. When you're going with the flow, these so-called obstacles and difficulties that other people have actually help you. That's a big turnaround in your life. So finding out what higher intelligence wants you to do here on the planet is easy if you know the email address and you know where to send it and when to send it and how. So send that video off, let it come back, and start working on that plan until you start getting some guidance. Either the doors will open up in front of you, or maybe doors will close in front of you. And so send that off as a video and refine it and fine-tune it until you become the person you want to be, until you're doing what gives you a sense of purpose in your life. Now, if you look at the great teachers that came to this planet to show us how to live, how to live physically, how to live spiritually, how to live within these laws of righteousness, and how to live with the totality of ourselves, they weren't finished when they got here. They weren't done yet. They were working on themselves. They were fasting. They were studying. They were meditating exactly the way you're doing right now. They were fulfilling their purpose here on this planet in life by first doing their own work, by going within themselves and achieving that kingdom within themselves, and by living with these laws. They were achieving their purpose here on the planet. And by you learning to go inside yourself with this program, you can achieve your purpose here on the planet. You can align yourself with higher intelligence. You can be in the flow, and your life can become as easy as floating down the river on a big log. Jose Silva believed that we were all sent here for a purpose. Now, where did he get that belief? He got that belief from his own life. He was guided. He was helped along the way in his studies. Now, here's someone from the poorest family in Laredo, Texas, orphaned at six or seven years old and becoming the breadwinner of a family and learning how to shine shoes, how to take care of chickens and build up an egg business to feed his family and going in the army and then learning about electronics. So here's a radio and later on TV repairman decides to start studying psychology, meditation, how the mind works, intuition, and Jose told me that every once in a while he would just get disgusted and discouraged and he would put all his books under the bed in a box and then something would happen to show him that this was the way. And one time he had really stopped. He had really quit, shoved all the books under the bed. That's it. And he wins the lottery. Now, what was his reason for quitting? He didn't have enough money 
to continue with the research, and he was taking too much time away from his business, so he didn't have money to support his family. So what does higher intelligence do? Opens the door. And it's very important. It's very important for you to understand that you came here for a purpose. Now, we're not trying to make you very important or some big shot. We're saying that you have a very important part to play in the scheme of things, that you can help the people around you to evolve, that you can help bring more love into the world. You can solve problems using all of these techniques on this program. You can make this a better place to live. Now let's talk about when we get resistance or when we have our mental video delivered to us and here we take off and go and the door is locked. Now, the left brain at a very light, shallow level of mind is going to want to beat on that door and push on it and try to get around it or robotically come up, boom, hit the door, robotically come up, boom, hit the door. So what Jose Silva taught us to do, remember now, on the inside is not the law of effort, it's the law of attraction. So you go back inside, reiterate the plan, send the video, and attract an easier doorway. We didn't come here to struggle. We didn't come here to fight with the world and be at odds with all these things. Jose Silva and this program are teaching you how to blend, to blend with this program, to blend with the flow of life, and to quit putting out so much effort and getting so little, and to start attracting what will help you and help others around you. Purpose of life. This is an interesting subject. This is sort of a subject that I never actually even thought about until I was in my 40s. And I never even started figuring out until I was in my late 50s. Life has always, in my case, been really simple. I am amazed at how many people think I'm smart and creative. But see, what happens is, is I didn't realize until I was teaching the Ultramind that I'm one of those guys that just accidentally stumbled into my path starting about the age of seven years old in 1950 when I started taking martial arts. And I just loved it so much that everything I did past that point just kept me in that mode. Most people have been proven psychologically that their dreams and all their desires and all their wishes, if they're not in their mode where they want to go and where they feel good going, they start dying out about the age of 25. And by the time they're 30, you know, they're stuck in a job for life because they don't have a purpose in life. They have nothing that pulls them forward. It's like the carrot technique that people talk about, and it's like the stick technique that people talk about. You know, a carrot is a purpose in life. It leads you forward. A stick is what you're running away from. I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be broke. And so because I don't want to be broke, I'll take the only job that I can find or the job that gives me the most money. And so these people have a lot of stress in their life. and They end up with all these things that we're actually teaching how to solve in this Ultramind Silva course, which is, you know, health benefits. It's the abundance part. It's the relationships parts. It's all those things that we're talking about. I'm married to a fantastic lady. And once I figured out things like purpose in life, I looked at her life and I went, my gosh, she's got it. This is a woman, Lynn, that wanted to be a school teacher all of her life. And everything that she did led her towards teaching school. And she loved to teach kids in the junior high school realm and also in the grade school realm. And she's following me around because I'm doing all my businesses and I'll do a business and I can run it for about six or eight years, make a lot of money. Then I get bored and I sell it and make some money and I move someplace else and do something else, which is usually the same business, but in a different location. And anyway, so she follows me. And so we opened up headquarters in Idaho and there wasn't any job for school teachers in Idaho. So it took her about three months to find one. And so she still got a job when no one else could. 
because it seemed like because she was such a good teacher, she found a job when no one else could find a job. And a couple years later, she was voted most outstanding teacher for the state of Idaho. So I retired back there in 1980 the first time, sat around for about three years, and I decided to go for a doctorate in Colorado. And so I opened up another business in Colorado Spring, and, you know, my wife goes with me, and there's no teaching jobs there either, but she found one, but it took about two weeks this time, and she got hired there. I guess that credential she had from Idaho sure helped a bit. But a couple years later, she got Teacher of the Year in Colorado, too. And then in 87, I retired again, moved back to Oregon, where it's nice and quiet, not many people. I get to ride my motorcycle, shoot my guns, do things that are fun for me, and still teach the people I want to teach how I want to teach them. And there wasn't any jobs in Oregon, but she found a job, and it took her about another two weeks this time to find a job, no problem at all. And guess what? In a couple of years, she got Teacher of the Year in Oregon, too. And so when you look at her and you look at school and you know how she's totally enthusiastically driven to have these kids learn and grow and achieve, and she's just full of life. She's just full of life. In most of her areas of life, she's just very, very good and very, very happy at it. And it's her purpose in life that's keeping her happy, keeping her determined, keeping her youthful. And it does pay off really good for her. Now, on the other hand, I have a really good friend. I've known this guy for like 29 years. Um, fantastic cook. Grew up. He wanted to cook. He wanted to run restaurants. And he actually did that for other people. He cooked and he ran restaurants. But he hadn't learned how to do what we call being at your center, making decisions at your center. So pretty soon he was just, I call it being a slave wage. He was working for somebody else, making minimum wage, doing their job for them as they pulled in the money. This is a concept that we came up a long time ago with when we hire employees. We just say, hey, look at that house up on the hill there. You like that? You like that swimming pool up there? You like all the other stuff up there? And the guy goes, yes, I do, I do. And you, and you just look at him and say, well, you just keep working hard for me and pretty soon I'll own it. Okay, and that's basically what happens with most people is they end up working for somebody else and somebody else owns it. But if you find your purpose in life, then you'll find out using those laws that Jose was talking about and you take that first step and it's pretty easy to do, that means you're on the right step. If you take your second step and it's easier to do, that means better that you're on the right step. But if it gets more difficult to do, that means you're on the wrong step. Now, I can really relate to my own life the best. And in my life, like I said before, I've always loved martial arts. And I take to martial arts like a duck takes to water. And so whenever I study martial arts or teach martial arts, it happens really good and happens real fast. But I also have a degree in education. Well, I couldn't find a job teaching anywhere I ever tried to apply to. I don't know what it was. But when I think about Frank, which I talked about earlier, and I talked about him blessing women after he had his divorce, well, if I had probably blessed a teaching job, I probably would have made my purpose for teaching people, learning how to be safe, how to be aware, how to be confident, how to stay healthy. Maybe those principles would have worked out better for me if I would have gone for my higher ideal but I didn't, and so I went back into the martial arts field, and I did things there that got me my purpose where I wanted to. And so what is the purpose of teaching martial arts? Is it a purpose of beating people up? Is it a purpose of helping people grow and evolve to where they want to go? And so when you chunk up to the higher purposes of anything, then you can find a lot of realms to teach you or that you can learn to teach others that will give them those same criteria. So let's say that you want to teach people how to gain wisdom, okay? If you go back to even the Bible where they go in Proverbs, wisdom is the principal thing, and with thy wisdom get thee thy understanding, okay? That is basically what all development is about because when you connect at the delta doorway with your higher intelligence through the Ultramind ESP systems training, you'll notice that you now have connection to higher wisdom to your own unconscious mind, to your traits and your belief patterns that made you what you are. You come down to this planet, you have a certain skill that you are supposed to be doing for your own evolvement. At the same time, you're supposed to be helping the world get to be a better place to live in. And so this connection to the Delta doorway gives you that information up into your unconscious mind, which then gives it into your conscious mind. So then you can take action and patterns and go forward. So basically, you get into the Oracle of Delphi, the same thing was know thyself. If you know thyself, you know your purpose for being on this planet. And if you don't know your purpose, well, everything else evaporates. Wishes evaporate. Again, dreams die. And so get your purpose. Go towards your purpose. Use these drills that Jose Silva gives you here at the last conditioning cycle. 
and just ask yourself those questions. Go back and remote view your past. Find out what your strengths were at that time, what felt good for you, what you liked doing. Remote view your friends from that time and see how they looked at you and the perspective they had. And then what you do is you go ahead and set up that mental video technique and actually do the beta version first, and then you go and do the alpha version and actually set up the solution and get the answers for what you have on that project in your mind so you can go towards your purpose in life. And purpose in life doesn't have to be a Rolex. It could be anything. It could be better relationships. It could be better health. It can be a lot of better things. In fact, most of the health problems caused, in my opinion, is caused mainly by people going towards the wrong purpose and not being centered when they go towards that purpose. And there's many documented cases that people are dying from clinical diseases and they say, well, you've got two months to live. And the guy goes, really? Wow. And so the guy quits his job, goes home, goes out and goes, well, I like to garden. And so he spends all summer gardening and he goes back in six months later for a checkup and found out there is no cancer anymore. It's gone. He changed his focus on life and his body changed. Now, I would suggest from that point there, find a purpose in life, what you're really drawn towards and go towards that. In the next conditioning cycle, we will program information for your benefit suggestions and strategies to help you find and fulfill your purpose in life. So join me in session 16 for learning your life's purpose. This mental training exercise of Jose Silva's Ultramind system provides you guidance and suggestions that you can use to help you determine your purpose in life. I'm John LaTourette, and I'll be your guide. In the background, you will hear the gentle tapping of the theta sound, a natural sound that will help your brain adjust to lower frequencies. This recording is to be used with eyes closed. So do not play it when you are driving or performing any other activity that requires the use of your eyesight. Remember that if, at any time, you feel uncomfortable, readjust your position to make yourself more comfortable. If you feel you must open your eyes for any reason, then open your eyes and make yourself comfortable. If you open your eyes, then go back to the beginning of the recording and start over. Anytime you desire to relax, mentally or verbally repeat the word, relax and you will relax physically and mentally. This mind training exercise is adapted from one originally copyrighted by Jose Silva of Laredo, Texas in 1969 after 25 years of research. New material on this recording is copyrighted in the year 2003 by Silva Ultramind Systems. Reproduction for redistribution is strictly prohibited. Now prepare for this exercise by finding a comfortable position. We will start this exercise with the three to one method. Find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize number three, three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I am going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your throat. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest externally and internally. Relax your abdominal area externally and internally. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. 
relax your feet. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now and more so every time you practice. To enter mental relaxation level two, take a deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times and you are at level two. Level two is for mental relaxation where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To improve mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To go to your center, take a deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I am going to count from 10 to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. 10, nine, feel going deeper. Eight, seven, six, deeper and deeper. Five, four, three, deeper and deeper. Two, one, You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. Laws of programming. The following laws are to be considered when programming. Do to others only what you like others to do to you. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. The solution must be the best for everybody concerned. The solution must help at least two or more persons. The solution must be within the possibility area. Principles to keep in mind when programming. The following principles apply to programming. Objective physical communication takes place at the beta left brain dimension using the objective physical senses the hearing is used for perception, and the voice is used for transmission. Subjective spiritual communication takes place at the alpha right brain dimension by using the spiritual senses. Visualization is used for perception, and imagination is used for transmission. In the objective physical dimension, the past is behind us, the present is our present position, and the future is ahead of us. In the subjective spiritual dimension, the past is to your right, the present is centered straight ahead, and the future is to your left. Impression of information for your benefit, suggestions and strategies to help you find and fulfill your purpose in life. Jose Silva believed that we were all sent here for a purpose and that the purpose is to correct problems so as to improve conditions on planet Earth and to help make this planet a better place to live. You can use the Alpha Level to help you gain insight into what kind of work you are best suited for. To do this, enter your center with a three-to-one method and at your center, you can analyze your life, your skills and abilities, your likes and dislikes. You can go back mentally to your childhood and remotely view the past, to observe the child you used to be. What did this child like to do? What was this child good at? What did this child dislike? What did people praise this child for? 
What did people expect this child to accomplish? As you remotely view the past, you can talk to people who knew this child and gain their insights. You can observe this child that was you from your perspective as an adult. What would you recommend to this child? What can this child learn and do to improve conditions on this planet? What will be needed in the future when this child is an adult and has a desire to carry out the mission that has been assigned by higher intelligence? What is needed in order to improve conditions on the planet? Which of these needs is this child best suited to work on? What best suits the child's temperament, skills, and personality? You can mentally regress yourself back and recall the feelings and the hopes and dreams and ambitions of this child. What did you want to do to help improve conditions on this planet? What most inspired and influenced you as a child, and why? What did you daydream about when you were a child? Who and what inspires and influences you today, and why? What do you daydream about? As you do this analysis at your center, Remember to remain relaxed and maintain minimum mental activity so that you do not become too excited and come out of your level. You can use the deepening exercises at any time to ensure that you remain at your level. True satisfaction and a sense of fulfillment usually come from doing worthwhile work that you are good at, work that improves conditions on planet Earth. It may be hard work, and it might not be as much fun as other work you could do, but the satisfaction that it brings you provides a very special kind of joy, happiness, and sense of fulfillment. What kind of work do you feel at your level will bring this kind of satisfaction? What do you believe that you can do that you are suited for that will help to improve conditions on this planet? When you have completed your analysis and self-inventory at your level, you can come out of level and use the insights that you gained in your mental videos. In the first mental video, the one that you create at the beta level, depict your present situation, what you are doing, how you feel about it, and what you are doing to find your true purpose in life. Then in the second mental video, which you create while at the alpha level, when you are ready to go to sleep, depict the kind of work that you think you should be doing to correct problems, prevent problems, and carry out your assignment here on planet Earth. Use the insights you have while at the alpha level to make the best decision you can about what you think you are best suited to do in order to improve conditions as much as possible. Then, go to sleep with the intention of delivering both videos to your tutor on the other side in the spiritual dimension while you sleep. During the next three days, look for indications of how to proceed. When opportunities present themselves and you follow up on them and obtain beneficial results, this could be an indication that you are moving in the correct direction. The more indications you receive, the more confident you can be that you are receiving help and guidance from higher intelligence to proceed in this manner. If you encounter an obstacle, do whatever is necessary to overcome it and notice how long it takes to overcome this obstacle. Then if you encounter another obstacle, notice how long it takes to overcome this obstacle. If it takes half as long as it took to overcome the first obstacle, this is a good sign. If it takes twice as long to overcome the second obstacle as it did the first, then this could be an indication that you are moving in the wrong direction. If you encounter a third obstacle, notice how long it takes to overcome it. If it takes half as long to overcome the third obstacle as it did the second, and it took half as long to overcome the second obstacle as it did the first, this is probably an indication that you are moving in the correct direction and that you are receiving help from higher intelligence. If it takes twice as long to overcome the third obstacle as it did the second, and it took twice as long to overcome the second obstacle as it did the first, this is probably an indication that you are not moving in the correct direction. This is one of the ways that higher intelligence provides guidance to us, 
analyze the situation at your center at 10 cycles alpha, and if you feel that the indications are that you are not moving in the correct direction, then consider other ways to proceed. At your center, consider alternatives. Select one and use your mental video technique to see what kind of guidance you receive. Jose Silva advises that we don't batter down doors. When a door won't open after you have made a good effort, this is usually an indication from higher intelligence that there is another door that is better for you. Continue to use the mental video technique and observe the indications and you will find the doorway that is best for you. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you'll enter a deeper, healthier level of mind faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help your loved ones physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind. You will always use these levels of the mind in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when we move on, we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I am going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before. You'll have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache, no ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears, no ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of the mind. One, two, coming out slowly now, three, at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep, four, five, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before.